at 2 minutes 40 per 100, that's, that's 12 minutes. S7, Sister Island, can I help you? Good, uh, good morning, who am I talking to there? Sister Island. A Fiona Island, is it? That's right. Fiona, I've got a big surprise for you. You'd never guess who this is. Oh, no! It's, <laughs> it's Bert Newton from the Don Lane Show. Isn't that a wonderful? We're recording the wheel segment right now, Fiona. Who put me in for it? I think, I'm, I'm not sure myself, I think the, the patients and staff of um, the spinal unit there. So, are you ready? Yes. Just about to spin the wheel, and uh, let's see what comes up here. Fiona, <laughs> can you believe what it stopped on? Oh, what? It's <laughs> It stopped on a Qantas flight on the 21st of August. Yes. To... Don't tell me. America? No, that's wrong. Ah. Uh, Sorry. They didn't Sir, give me that part. You've lost the competition. I've lost my voice, too. <laughs> it's Alan McGurvin, Fiona. Yeah, right? with a friend. Oh, I What do I say? Eekly... what? Eekly Badish. Eekly Badish. Eekly Badish. The lady is German. Good morning. Do I six seven three one five? Uh, good wagen. Uh, could I speak to Ingrid, please? Yes. Danke. I beg your pardon? Uh, danke. Who's, uh, who's speaking? Uh, don't tell her. It's Wayne Roberts. Wayne Roberts? Yeah, no, 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 no. Danke. Don't cough. You told. No tell. Yeah, hang on a sec. Okay, you get Ingrid. Yeah, just hang on a sec. Volkswagen, sell crap. Kremlin. Who was the other bike that had the tanks? On the sand dunes, what was his name? Rommel. 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 Hello? Uh, yeah, is that you, Ingrid? Ingrid? Yes? Ich liebe dich. Un veni pu un formi ke. Yeah! Yeah! Ich liebe dich! Can I sing to you in German? Yes, please. Here I go. Und du kratten und zuckeln blästen und du schwunzeln blend du. Sieg leb und und go a sauer kratten Volkswagen too. Und Kinder hunde kratten the Kremlin rommel too. Und und krunde hatten hüden den hüden hatten hüden den und Happy birthday, love. Oh, thank you very much. I caught you. For BK Music. There's a famous saying that you can fool some of the people all of the time, all of the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. Alan McGurvin disagrees. He attempts to fool people every day with outrageous impersonations of famous people, or tradesmen, or clerks, or policemen, making phone calls to unsuspecting Brisbaneites. The luckless victims are dobbed in by so-called friends, and the merciless McGurvin usually takes them hook, line, and sinker. He's known as the most capable con merchant of the media, and he does it brilliantly just to get Brisbane smiling. His business card says Alan J. McGurvin, legend in his own lifetime, successful star, Lawns Mode. Hello. Ah, uh, Kath Newell, is it? Yes. Kath, Glenn Taylor from State Affair. But he seems to spend more time impersonating other people. Kath, I've just found out, I've been on to Qantas, I'm on the flight to Wellington tomorrow and I understand that you have the seat next to me. Is that right? Yes. That's very nice. Um, it is. Kath, I, I, the reason I'm calling you is I wondered, when I get on board, would you pretend not to recognize me? Oh, yes, for sure. Because yes. being uh, a celebrity, I, I often, and it happens that people mo mob me in the streets. And oh, I rang up um, someone one day and started to do a Malcolm Fraser. I think that's where it all started. And everyone had told me I could never do a Malcolm Fraser. So I listened to a lot of Fraser and worked on it. And I've almost, almost got Malcolm off. It's, it's not easy to do a Malcolm Fraser. You can't, sound, you can't sound quite that bland, people of Australia. The phone calls have become an integral part of the show. So much so that he receives up to 50 letters a day asking him to phone friends and relatives and pretend he's anyone from Bert Newton to rent a car with kid Bob Ansett. 
It's part of the overall concept of fun and frivolity in a show that's grabbed a big slice of the mid-morning listening market. People just don't get enough entertainment on radio these days, and I think that's what it's and all this about. Is what, this is what you're all trying to be about now. Sure. What, you, you're fed up, you think Talkback's had it? Yeah, absolutely. I think people are sick of, of listening to women talk about the, the budgie died and the gas bill came in today and uh, the operation didn't work out. I, there, there's probably a place for it, but I think most people, particularly in the morning time, want to be entertained. This is another one of those little farewell presents. Hi. Hello, Barbara. Yeah. It's Angela from the Don Lang Show in Melbourne here. Could you hold the line for Mr. Bert Newton, please? What? Hello, is that you, Angela? Bert Newton from the Don Lang Show. How are you this morning? I, Angela, are you there? Uh, hello, this is Barbara. Uh, I'm sorry. Barbara, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Bert Newton from the Don Lane Show. Isn't it wonderful to hear from me this morning? What? Somebody put your name in for the wheel and we're just about to pre-record oh the wheel for tonight's show. Put my name in for the wheel? Isn't this exciting? What? Yes! Now, oh. all I want you to do is... Are you sitting down, Barbara? Well, I'm going to spin the wheel now and we'll see what we come up with, all right? It's um, spinning now. Oh, I suppose nothing like this has ever happened to you, has it? Do you want to say hello to, uh, say hello to Don? Well, sure. Say hello to Don. Hello, Don. Hi, Barbara! Oh. It's coming up to, uh, let me see, it's stopping, it's slowly stopping at um, four. Slowly stopping at four. Yeah. Hang on, no, it's not quite, it's not the whole message, it's four IP. Four IP. Bert Newton is the one I like because it, for me it's so easy to do and not many people apparently can do a Bert Newton. Mm. Bert uh, rang me a few months ago and said, I believe you do a very good impersonation of me, Alan. And I thought, oh... What he'd done is he'd rang Jeff Lewis, the manager of the Broad Beach Hotel, to book in Patty's mother. And Jeff said, McGurvin, it's you, is it? He said, no, it's, it's really Bert Newton. <laughs> and it was. But Alan McGurvin, radio announcer and zany personality, has also turned his hand to that of Cupid. Every Monday morning, he pairs off a guy and girl on a blind date over the airwaves, giving them a free dinner so they can get to know one another. A year and 50 dates later, two couples are engaged and only three people have failed to turn up for the free dinner 4IP provides. Well, Graham, she's just about to make a choice and it won't be an easy one for our 50th dial a date. OK, then. Hang on. Tracy? Yes. Tracy, for a night at the Melbourne. Make your decision. Oh, it's a tough one. It's not easy, Tracy. No, no. If only all of life's decisions were this pleasant, though. You've never done this sort of thing before, have you? No, I haven't. Just imagine tonight you'll be walking into the entrance of the... What, tomorrow night, whatever. Uh, I think Chris sounds nice. Chris? Yes, the Taurus. Chris is the... Let me see, that's the chef. Yes. He's 21? Yes. And a Taurus? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think he looks like? Um, well, I'm not sure, but he sounds very nice. He does, doesn't he? Yes. All right, well, I'll meet you there tomorrow night and introduce you oh. as a, our special 50th dial a date and you bet you'll have a good night and you just never know no, no. this could be the start <laughs> okay we'll see you tomorrow night at the melbourne oh great okay honey he does it extremely well doesn't he i had a call one day from a man when uh, we were running death of a princess who claimed to be from the uh, brisbane muslim society and i thought it was alan mcgurvin I laughed all the way through it, and the guy was for real. When I mentioned this to Alan, he said, uh, just when you thought it was safe to answer the telephone. We'll take a break, after which we'll be taking a look at today being Hiroshima Day. Don't let him bite you too hard. Oh, I won't. There's the address on the back of the envelope. Cut we to need a tight shot of there. Jackie now. Why, is he biting you hard? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only on my arm. Oh, he's a... Oh, no, he's it's... an absolute... It's all right. Arm. What are we going to do now, kids? Keep... Oh, we've got a stretch. Give me the shorty shooters. That'll take about ten seconds. Looking quickly along. <laughs> Who have you got on your radio show today? Anybody oh, exciting? Oh, yeah, today being Friday, incidentally. Uh, what? Uh, I've you. got the Premier of Queensland. And hopefully... Is he really going to be on the show? Sure he is. Well, it'll sound like him, ma'am. Oh, we've got it. We've got the bit where this dog chewed down Superchook in the public eye. You've got to see everyone this. to see. Just like this. Sit down, matey. Look here. Oh! <laughs> Ow! Is that stinging? 
<laughs> He's got him by the head. Will you stop it? Humphrey, come on if you can't. Now sit down. Sit down, please. Because I said you look like a ceiling frosty pooty that's been blown up. <laughs> <laughs> what does he bite you down? Yeah. I think he loves chickens. Why don't you feed the thing? <laughs> things I've ever seen in my Why life. Why does he do it? <laughs> Why do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Why does he want to buy people down? Listen, you. He's a guard dog. <laughs> now listen. Look, he don't yeah, put your yeah. finger through the couch. Don't you? You shouldn't chew people down. It's very rude. Anyway, uh, if you've got one of these dogs, I know your problem. He's coming around the back. Look out. It's very rude to lacerate people. <laughs> we'll be... <laughs> we we'll going? be right back. Where are we going? He, he knows you're a bad cowboy. Oh, yeah, I'll get him. Cowboy, Just a second, I'll get him. Have the hat, kid. Hey, listen. 